Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's awesome to be here to help kick off OCP. Uh, what could be uh, more top of mind today than AI? AI is exploding, creating new system design challenges for us. Uh, and, and I wanted to dive into that today. But, but first, I wanted to just highlight the collaboration between Intel and OCP and OCP uh, partner companies. Uh, we were one of the founders of OCP. We've been here since the beginning. We've made endless contributions of technology, specifications, led work streams, contributed to work streams. Uh, this is a community that can solve important and difficult problems. When I look at this big audience here, I just see the possibilities. And that's what we're here to do. And in fact, I want to just kind of dive right in to what I think is the most important problem facing us today in this AI explosion. And that is the problem of power consumption. So AI models are growing at 10x per year, uh, driving huge infrastructure builds that consume megawatts of power. And we really have to address it uh, from a carbon footprint and from a sustainability point of view. There's so much that we need to do. We, sustainability was probably the biggest topic at last year's show. And with this AI explosion, the urgency is only amplified. I have sort of three thoughts on this topic I thought I would, would share today. And the first is how modularity and modular system design, which has made big gains, and we're going to talk about that in a second, uh, how we drive more efficient compute and how we extend that grand collaboration between hardware and software to drive really big gains. You know, the, the, the gains of the last decade driven by things like virtualization and now acceleration, not just of AI workloads, but all workloads are creating new opportunities for us to really move the needle on power consumption. Uh, so let's, let's dive right in. Uh, modularity has been a topic at OCP, and we've really built out together an amazing array of specifications of interoperable building blocks that allow us to uh, reuse uh, and really drive carbon footprint, embodied carbon, of our designs down. The foundational specifications are things like DCMHS, DCSCM, and OCP NICS. And now you can see you know, new specifications coming online, three new specifications this year, building out this portfolio. We also have new companies joining the DCMHS family with Ampere, Jabil, and now NVIDIA. I think the task forward is clear. We need to take what is now, I think, a robust ecosystem for uh, standard cloud deployments and really expand it upwards for AI, as well as into smaller form factors in the edge. And you know, we've really invested at Intel in this. And in our forthcoming platform for our Granite Rapids and Sierra Forest uh, platforms, we've built a whole ecosystem based on these OCP standards. And you can see the flagship partners that we have here, companies like Quanta, Wistron, Asus, Inventech, Supermicro has been a key partner for us with an OAM solution for our Gaudi 2 accelerators. We really believe in this vision, and we are working hard to make it a reality. And in fact, I wanted to show off uh, some of these solutions. Uh, you, you can see here these two uh, uh, quanta boards. The, the full systems are uh, on the show floor. You can see them. This one in particular, uh, this is a 12-channel uh, motherboard supporting up to DDR8800 speeds with our Monument Creek technology, supporting forthcoming Granite Rapids and Sierra Forest CPUs up to 576 cores. This is the, the little brother, the two DIM per channel, eight channel solution for that. And so these are fully DCMHS compliant and support that whole ecosystem. But we're not, we're not done with standard you know, two socket servers. We really need to build out this ecosystem around the edge. And so we have been partnering with Foxconn Industrial Internet for some years uh, to bring to market modular solutions in smaller form factors. And so this is a great example here from Foxconn Industrial. This is a Sapphire Rapids, a fourth generation uh, Xeon uh, with a VRAN boost technology. This is for the 5G VRAN market. You can see how compact this form factor is. I think this is an excellent example of where we can go with next generation standards. OK, so, so modularity can get you that 30% reduction in embodied carbon. But what about actual energy efficiency of the computers themselves? And so that has to be a key focus. And uh, a couple of items here that I'm just super excited about. I, I have something to show you. This is, uh, uh, this is our forthcoming Sierra Forest 
CPU. So this is a Xeon processor based on Intel 3 technology with 288 cores. 288 cores. This will deliver 2.4x performance per watt improvements and a 2.5x better rack density. A rack with Sierra Forest 288 core CPUs could have as many as 11,000 cores. So this is a kind of dense infrastructure just unimaginable a few years ago. And I think it's essential to achieving the kind of perf per watt and the kind of infrastructure that we need to make room for AI. Uh, but that's not all. I think we have to look also at liquid cooling. And, and liquid cooling, I think, is a really exciting area. It's come a long way. I think we have to recognize that it's going to be pervasive. Liquid cooling is important for three reasons, and probably most of you know this. Number one, it allows us to save 30% power at a data center level right off the top. We spend so much power in fans and in cooling systems, uh, and liquid cooling allows us to just sidestep that. Second is water consumption. The water consumption of data centers with evaporative water cooling uh, is extreme and impacts communities. And, and many of us are working hard on water conservation projects. By moving to liquid cooling, we can just sidestep the issue entirely. And then finally, uh, silicon's going to push us there anyway. Uh, it's only the nature of Moore's law and the roadmaps that you see for GPUs, switches, even CPUs that are going to push us into these very high power domains. You're going to be encountering one kilowatt plus silicon that's just going to demand liquid cooling. So it's time that we get started building the standards and the ecosystem to su support wide adoption. Whether that's direct to chip cold plate style liquid cooling, the more uh, traditional style, or fully immersion solutions which achieve the best uh, energy efficiency possible. And the, the immersion ecosystem in particular has made a lot of gains in the last year. A, a year ago, we released a spec through OCP for an immersion fluid standard. And the response to that has been tremendous. There are 16 fluids that have been targeted towards this specification. Uh, we just announced a partnership with Shell uh, uh, just last month on qualifying their fluid in the Intel Advanced Data Center Development Lab. Uh, these hydrocarbon-based fluids can deliver high performance and a more sustainable solution. So the emergent ecosystem moving very rapidly and I think becomes a really key alternative for high energy efficiency deployments. OK, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about hardware-aware software and what we can do with the hardware and software collaboration. I, I think this is the most impactful area if we want to have a really significant impact on power consumption, if we really want to make room for uh, this big expansion of AI that we're all working towards and dreaming about. So you know, it's, it's no secret that model sizes have been expanding 10x per year. And I think for the largest frontier type models, that's going to continue. And, and certainly there is a place for that. But something that's received a great deal of attention in the last year is the rise of what we didn't all call expert models. Some people call them nimble models. It's when we take a smaller model framework, like a good example would be the Llama 2 model uh, from Meta. Uh, and these models are much smaller, but when we fine tune them on data that's specific to the application domain, we get an excellent user experience but we get it with a vastly smaller model, so, which means vastly smaller compute infrastructure. So consider for a second like a, a 275 billion parameter GPT-3 model compared to a Llama 7B model, that's 25 times smaller. And while the fine-tuned model doesn't have the general purpose capabilities, for a specific application, you can get an excellent uh, result. We're using this in my own uh, department at Intel to build out a customer uh, service a capability uh, based on our technology and our data. So this is a really powerful technique. And I have a little, uh, a little demo to show you. Uh, so this is based on our forthcoming fifth gen Intel Xeon processor. This is going to launch in December. It's compatible with our prior fourth gen uh, platform. And so what we have here, we have the same chip on both sides. Uh, but on the left, you see a standard AVX 512 acceleration. Both sides are accelerated. But the AVX 512 acceleration on the left, and then our latest AMX accelerator on the right. And this is a bit uh, supercharged with the DDR5 5600 
megatransfers per second memories that the new platform uh, supports. And so you can see it's a little clunky on the left. You're getting a much better user experience uh, on the right. And the thing to think about here is that you know, this is a good user experience when trained on the domain-specific data, but this is running on a standard server. This is a, a two-socket server. It's a 32-core CPU. It's not, uh, it's not some super expensive, power-hungry infrastructure. It can be deployed today. You know, it has, it's based on standard software frameworks uh, that have been well-enabled for years. And so performance up by more than 1.6, and the energy efficiency you know, is a 2x improvement with half the carbon footprint of even just the recent legacy acceleration. So by investing in AI solutions in the CPU, we've really made AI on standard servers very practical when fine-tuned with that data. And so just think about the, the, the huge difference in power consumption this can make. And I think it's just a key message for all of us as we're deploying AI services, find the right model for your application. Don't use a trillion element model on an application where a seven billion element model uh, can do. And we need to keep investing in a full range of AI solutions that hit these different power performance points so we can really optimize the power infrastructure that we use. Okay. Um, just kind of wrapping up. You know, we need to attack the problem at all levels of the data center. And we can make substantial progress right now. None of the ideas I've pointed to here are long-term new technologies, no real fundamental breakthroughs required. What's really required is cooperation. And so data center level efficiencies, 30% opportunity with liquid cooling. How do we make that more practical? How do we engage more vendors? How do we build better standards to drive adoption, whether that's direct to chip or immersion. Embodied carbon in our server designs, how can we accelerate the move to modular computing? How can we accelerate the circularity and reuse that becomes possible with modular solutions? And then finally, how can we get hardware and software to collaborate better? How can we find uh, solutions with smaller models that don't require so much infrastructure and don't burn so much power? You know, Intel continues to invest in the CPUs to make AI run extremely well on our CPUs so that it becomes a practical application on a standard server. And we're going to continue to do that. Um, the opportunities in front of us are significant. And I hope there's going to be tons of discussion at this conference, not just on these ideas, but other ideas. Because I think in this room, we have the power to drive very, very significant change. And significant change is certainly needed. So let's go attack it. Uh, let's have a great show. I look forward to interacting with as many of you as possible here on the floor and the rest of the events. So thank you very much. Thank you.